Well, hey folks, welcome to the Wolf Den. I know it's overdue. Uh, getting really busy. What I wanted to do is this is totally, really not fishing related. It goes along with everything else to do with fishing. But I've got a whole bunch of stuff spread here on the old workbench. And we're going to talk about it because hopefully you'll learn something because I'm learning something. It is based on fishing or EDC, everyday carry. So stay tuned and sit through the intro and we'll be right back. We're going to go through some of these things here, and we're going to talk about the everyday carry slash fishing implement, uh, multi-toolage conundrum. I have been spending, I don't know, the last two or three days, maybe going over YouTube because you know I got not only a laptop I don't use phones for watching video I have a laptop and it's connected to a giant screen about I don't know this big as a monitor then I have a smart TV hooked in to the intranet <laughs> alright remember this I did a video not long ago on the O2 Outdoor Creation Multi-Tool 8 Tools. Remember, I called this my EDC, my EDC, Everyday Carry. Well, here's what we got here now, folks. So let's start here. Remember this? I told you how much I like this thing. I really like it. I love the design. Okay? I mean, you got your Phillips head right there. It snaps. Hear that? It snaps open. And there's some pliers. And I mean, some decent pliers. I mean, look at it. They really close good. You had your Phillips here. A belt clip, which... If it doesn't have a belt clip, I'm not interested in it because I only wear AFCO Blue Water shorts. Not long pants, shorts, 12 months a year, seven days a week, 365 days a year. I wear AFCO Blue Water shorts. And that's it. That's... That's my uniform of the day. And it has a wonderful Cordura lined uh, plier pocket. One thing I like is plain blades. I don't want no fanciness. I don't want no super curvy. And I'm not really into serrations. You know, when you want to cut something, you just want to cut it. I, I mean, that's serrations. Here's what serrations mean to me. Oh, snap. You mean I got to sharpen that? But look what we're missing, folks. And I can't, I'm not even going to be able to get it out. Yeah, well, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it out without using another multi-tool, which is the same thing. I bought two of them because I liked it so much. And I was thinking about... Well, maybe I'll give one of these away. Okay. So here we go. Here's what's left of the pliers. There's what's left. Here's the handle that went on it. With your... Here's a washer that fell out of there. All right. But let me... Okay, I'll leave this here. So the, these were great. Look how look at the size of them. There is all kinds of reviews, uh, charade, cutlery, 
they imported these POSs, I guess, and they put some other implements on it. Number one, the first thing that happened is just cutting something simple. The blade got gouged and it didn't want to cut. This broke by me rewiring my trailer lights yesterday. And all I did was reach up and go to cut a zip tie. Not a big zip tie. One about that about that wide. So this not only broke, I mean it just didn't break, but I saved, I think I saved everything. Um, this was like a screw that went into this, that went into this, that had this, oh, this in there with a little detent bump. All right, so let me show you what it looks like because this one still works. Okay, there's the pliers knife right belt clip that's what I loved about it and I love this detents here right but the scissors just are already look at this how this is coming in this is coming in and hitting right there already from the clothes and look at see how watch and then watch My review of the Amuto or Altu. And I mean, look at this, folks. Look what they make. They make everything. And all they are is knockoff of good companies, good, you know, American companies. But I figured, I'd, you know, I was going to give it a try because I was going to give one of these away if it lasted. But it's junk. It's junk. It's junk. It's junk. Okay, so that's that. Let's move that to the side. All right. I'm in search of the perfect EDC for a fisherman. Everyday carry. All right, let's just go to this. Here's a nice, really nice rawhide pouch. Got this. I don't know for... I don't even know when I got it. But here... Oh, I know when I got it. Just let's back up. Here is a pair of original 100% Leathermans. If you can see that. Look how, I mean, look at this. These things are so sloppy. I, see how, I don't know if you can see the discoloration. These sat in my toolbox for 10 years because they literally got locked and somehow it got or welded together from being arced and the cutters or some somewhere in here see it right there it's kind of like all ate up and see the discoloration they got arced from electricity <laughs> so what it did is it like shut the whole thing you couldn't open it you could do this you could do this, but you couldn't do anything with it. And look at it, even to this day, look. Look. This won't open. Piece of crapola. Oh my god. I mean, this side's pretty much okay. And look at the file. I know. Look at this. Look at that file. I use this thing like no tomorrow. I should, I'm thinking about sending this in to Leatherman and going, yeah, 25-year warranty. I can't tell you when I got this. I mean, all the tools, look how loose the tools are. Look at this. All right, so what did I do? I don't know, for five bucks on eBay or something, I bought this little chintzy knockoff. Let's look at the difference in steel. And the plate here and the plate here. I mean, the connections, of course, I don't know why, but they're using, see, there's a spacer in there. That, that'll that really goof up where, see, they, they drop in here. They drop in. And then here, there's this, they use the spacer. This thing's as loose as a goose, too. 
but at least it works. It works. But still, no belt clip. Oh, here's what he's, here he is. Oh, for the fishermen. I mean, come on, knife makers and, and Gerber and all these people. Do you think real fishermen are using this stupid POS right here? Oh, let me measure my fish. Look, it's got increments on it. Oh, there's two inches. Let me measure my bluegill. Okay, he's four inches. I mean, this is all BS right here. Fish scaler, my butt. Right? So, there's the rest of the tools. I mean, the tools are okay. I mean, this thing will get you by, but you know what? Sheaths. Hate them. Hate this. I've got a Cordura lined plier pocket that everything just will fit in so perfectly. Look at that. That's pretty tight. Now watch this. It does the dance. Yeah. I'm almost thinking about sending this into a... Oh, yeah. Look at there. There's some measurements for you. Oh, let me see how big my speckly sea trout is. Yeah, that's a bunch of crap. At least they didn't have that on here. I mean, in the blade, I've kept this blade pretty good sharpness here. But, I mean, look how loose all everything is. Okay, enough about that. I cannot stand anything that needs this obstruction. Okay, hate it. All right, let's go. Let's jump to something else here. All right, this company, I don't know who they are, where they came from, what they're doing, but CUDA. They're everywhere. This company is everywhere making this cheap crapola that works fantastic in the beginning. These been on my boat. And now they're demoted. I mean, you can see I got them oiled because, look, they'll rust up. Um, these are CUDA shears. All right, let me, let's try something here. Oh, yeah. When I first got them, and I'm talking not a year ago, folks, that's when, I mean, why don't they make stuff for me? Will they make something for me? That actually lasts. Look at this. That's 100 pound mono. It used to go right through it. Let me get a bigger piece. That's my true test. All these guys do all this craziness of cutting paper and everything. Well, I'll tell you, cutting paper don't do diddly squat to a fisherman. Okay? And I know you probably can't see this dark up against this rubber mat but take take my word for it well okay cut it on two two turns and then buck is coming out with these splizzers when you replace them that's all fine to danny but the salt water version is a hundred and twenty dollars these had a cutter right here see that little notch and that cut wire pretty good. But I mean, look at the size of these handles and everything. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. In my opinion, ridiculous. And I mean, come on. Is that this clear? That It doesn't even look manly. At least make a tool that looks manly. This thing is not manly looking. It worked great when I first got it. Now... Garbajo. Okay. This probably right now works as good as this. And these literally say made in China. These were supposedly a stainless steel. Look at them. Look at these things. On my boat for probably less than a year. Handles cracked. I mean, why do I keep getting this junk? Because guess what? Everything is junk, folks. Everything. Okay? I mean, 
If you want me to test your stuff, I love how these guys test stuff. I've been watching one video after another. And these guys are going out to their wood pile and go, uh, 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 yeah, see, it actually cuts. Uh, 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 it cuts. No, day in, day out. And then don't do a review until after you used it. Don't. I don't want a review. You can do a show and tell. I like to do, and I and I refer to what I do many times on my ugly sticks and stuff like that. When I first get them, I'm doing a show and tell. The proof is, get on my boat, and that's when you're going to use it. Okay? I'm really adamant about this stuff, and I wish somebody would watch this and if this video. And if you got really the balls to think your stuff is good, send it to me. Okay, look at that. I mean, there's cheap Chinese, whatever. It's the same as that crap. It don't want to cut the. It don't want to cut the braid. Okay, what are we gonna go to next? Okay, let's go to a little bit of a praise. I've had this buck knife. What's it was called? The uh, oh, red point. Red point. I really like this because guess what? You can't pull that blade out. And then it's got your PBR opener right here, which I'm pretty much a can guy. But when I do get a bottle, I got a PBR opener right here, okay? But the nice thing about this buck, it's this is kind of rubbery. It's got a brand new clip on it. Why? Because I broke it. And then I went to the buck website and emailed customer support told them my um, model here the red point and said could I get a new belt clip they not only sent me a belt clip they sent me two additional screws and the little Torx head that goes in there to tighten it up a one for buck I mean, I'm sure this is made in China, but you know, here's what you do is you pull that little that little lever back and you flick it like that. I actually had a woman on my boat get scared. I did this one time in front of her. I reached in my Cordura pocket in my AFCO Blue Water shorts that I model every day of the week, 365 days a year, AFCO. Boy, if people only knew what... I mean, I'm a, I'm the real deal. I'm not on TV. I don't do all this. I'm not doing commercials. I wear and I work and I destroy. Real simple. Okay? How the belt clip broke... Oh, it's, it's already loose. I got to tighten it up. I didn't tighten it up, I guess, all the way. It's moving a little bit. But they sent me a free one. No problem. It was here in 10 days. You pull this back and you go like that. This woman on my boat thought I had like a switchblade. <laughs> okay. One thing I don't like about this knife and all knives in general is serrated. I don't like serrated. Give me a blade any day of the week that just looks like that or looks like this same deal give me a blade that looks like these two you know what that's called that's called just a plain old knife but they got to get fancy and they got to give you serrations now granted this that thing is a skin piercing I mean, that, that serration is right there. It's just so aggressive. Okay. It says China right there. 750. That might be the steel. Okay. These guys go nuts over the steel on YouTube. I mean, do fishermen go nuts over what kind of steel that the great company, the one of the greatest companies of all time and fish hooks, Mustad, which is now, I mean, was really is my favorite hook company in the world. Do we worry about the steel that they're using? 
I don't think so. But these guys worry about it. And that rotates really easy. And it's got the belt clip. Ease of operation, a PBR hole opener. I'm not all fascinated with this, but at least it's not one of those drop tanto point things. I hate that. So that's a great knife. I've had that. Look at it. Thing's filthy. Let's go way back, folks. Let's go way back as far as an EDC. This has been an EDC. This has been an EDC. Everyday carry. Okay, here we go. San Diego Police Department K9 unit. Buck. Um, made in USA. Rick Widener. Rick was a San Diego Police Department K9 cop. Great guy. Great guy. And he gave me this as a tip. Fifth years or 18 years ago. I'm talking a long time. And look at, okay, Buck, if you're watching, I still have it. I cherish this. Why? Let me tell you a quick and dirty story. When I was in the Air Force, I went in the Air Force and I went in guaranteed what they call guaranteed, my job was going to be security police law enforcement. There was security police law enforcement back in that day, security police security, aircraft security, that type of stuff. They were aircraft security guys, and then it was law enforcement guys. Law enforcement guys, like me, gave traffic tickets. Yeah, we worked the gates when the security guys were working the B-52s, okay? But I went in to do one thing in the Air Force, is become a canine guy, to be a canine guy. That's the whole purpose of me signing my name on the dotted line. Well, guess what? The Air Force kind of screwed me. Now that goes getting into an even a longer story, but needless to say, I wanted to learn a trade, sort of, and I wanted to be a dog handler, and I wanted to learn dog handling. Patrol, we had three kinds of dogs in the Air Force. Patrol, narc, and bomb. Narc being drug dogs. Patrol being just bad son of guns that all they have to do is go and your butt is getting eaten alive, okay, type of thing. And, and um, of course, bomb dogs, which I wanted no part of. But if it came with the, if it came with it, I'd have to do it, I guess. Um, look at this. I wore out the screw holes so I epoxied it and then ran the screws in so thumb stud look at the serrations them serrations used to probably go out to about here look at that blade and that thing is so sh I keep this sharp 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 buck you made a good one here so that's an EDC that I love Okay, let's go to something goofy again. This is called, what do they call this? A tool logic. I thought maybe this was going to be an EDC knife. A knife that you'd want to carry and you'd want to use. I use this stuff day in, day out. If you're a man, I should say, if you're a man that's outdoors, and doing it you're probably you got yourself an EDC going on no matter what it is an everyday carry knife or multi-tool okay so we got this tool logic I thought man this thing is cool as hell look at this uh oh stupid looking blade and it's one of those, I don't know what they call this. It's only beveled and sharpened on one side. 
God, I hate that thing. Look at that. You can't even see. There's no edge right there. There's no edge. You turn around, and then there's an edge. I don't know what you call that, but I hate it. Okay, then serrated. You know what it is? It's cheap. That's what it is. They go, one side. They never turn the knife over and go, over here, right? Nice, you know, uh, liner lock here. Everything's fine. Really snaps. It's tight. It's tighter than a Nats butt. Well, that's good. Uh, pocket clip. Three screws holding that baby together. Nice, nice. Oh, yeah, you think that'd be sweet, right? And look how that's put together. That's bent, so then you got to really push that over to drop that blade in there. It's got these, I guess these guys call it jimping. Nothing on the blade, but you got it here instead, which is, to me, a whole lot smarter place to put it. I mean, it's kind of kind of like this right you got some jimping back here you got right there to put your thumb on and then of course you got it on the blade nothing on the old uh yeah oh look at that yeah i forgot there you go you got some on the blade there but not on the handle i like it being on the handle i like this being on the handle that right there instead of on the blade all right, so I thought this was something else because it's got a surprise. It's got pliers. But these things are so small, they're useless. They're tweezers, folks. They're tweezers. They got a little cutter, right? They're spring-loaded. There you can see the spring down inside there. Okay. Ah. Uh, just doesn't do it so this doesn't hit the mark either folks this didn't hit the mark i'm not into tweezers so that was another fail so what do you do folks i'm not a big cash guy i'm a receipt guy because what i do is i stuff all my receipts in there this is a gerber so what do you got you got yourself a box cutter razor blade in there this thing is so handy folks and it's got a little liner lock and the cheapest place to ever buy these is walmart you can put it on a pocket you could use it as a money clip you could stuff receipts in it like i do i actually have three or four of these to tell you the truth because what i do is i pin these on uh jackets and things like that so i always always have some type of knife so love it love it like it hate it i can't find folks the perfect edc for a fisherman 100 pound braid 100 pound braid why do i even bother with cutters who cares about, you know, scissors then or whatever? Really, when it gets down to it, why do you need it? I can't find an everyday carry. Look at all this stuff. You know, I can't find an every, everyday carry. But what you can find is this. You can find this in your mailbox and what is this this is a titan titanium fillet knife you can win this and it will be your last knife it says my name on it captain dave sport fishing charters you can win this you're going to win this, the blade, and what is referred to as, if you've watched any of my other videos, and I hope you have, if not, everything will be in the description. Here is an edge recovering pad to ever fix the blade if you need it touched up. 
And how are you going to win this, folks? This is it. I hope you've stayed for the entire project here because you're going to win this, the edge recovery system, a brochure, the cards, and I'll throw in a couple of my cards. It's all ready to go. I got it in the box. And the first person, well, I'm not going to do the first person thing because I'm going to have my dad just pick a picture that he likes. How are you going to win this? Please email. Let's do email because then I can ship it to my dad. He's going to be, he is a total 100% innocent bystander. And he's just going to randomly pick somebody because, believe me, that's that's the way he is. He's, I mean, he he's not going to uh, know anybody or anything. He has no relationship with any of my subscribers or all he does, he does watch my YouTube channel. You're going to win this knife by sending me email a picture of you cleaning fish with your present knife. Cleaning fish with your present fillet knife. And we're going to have a cutoff. Let's put a cutoff on it. Let's have a total cutoff at the end of March on March 31st. Gives you plenty enough time to take a photo. Everybody's got a smartphone. I want to see a fillet knife. Okay? Cleaning a fish with your present fillet knife. Send me the photo. I'm going to put right here on the bottom of the screen my email in big letters and it will be in the video description below along with some other links and stuff and we're going to do a random pick let's have some fun there you go thanks for watching i know this was a long one believe me i'm watching the counter on the cam on the camera thanks a lot